Hey everybody, welcome back to the brewery. It's Josh and uh, Gary here. And uh, we look a little different than last time. Uh, we got this little pergola overhanging us and uh, we got taps. I think we left you guys last with the, the metal corrugated wood and uh, the bar was just as blank as it is now, so. Yeah, and we had just the <clears throat> framing around the uh, cooler itself and we had the drywall up, but it wasn't painted or trimmed out. But we'll take you around the brewery real quick, but uh, one thing that we had talked about last time was the sign. And uh, we were pretty pleased that they allowed us to put all, that, uh, all our letters on the sign and that they were gonna hang them when they hung the other blank sign boards. Well, they did not hang ours. So we did that today, as you can see in the video. So let's take a look around the brewery. So welcome to the brew house. It's our cellaring area, which you've seen before, but it's a little more finalized now. We've got our names on the tanks, if anybody recognizes that, Ursula, Ariel, Adela or Adea, depending on what part of the world you're from, Aquata, Arista, and King Triton. Uh, King Triton doesn't have his label on yet because He's getting an insulation blanket. Uh, he's the only one that's uh, not jacketed. Uh, so I think we left off last night. Some of the stuff was already in place, but wasn't tied up and finalized. So all of the uh, controlled solenoids, they're all wired. All the wiring is all tucked away. Um, we have uh, on off, um, shut off valves on both the uh, incoming glycol and the exiting glycol. And all the controls in the back there and of course the black wire would be our our temperature sensing wires coming back and all the insulations that's uh, underneath as well on the um, return at the base of the conicals uh, king triton has got a return here but um, his was a little different his stuck out on the sides so we put him last anyway um, he's our seven barrel fermenter and the rest are 500 liters which is like 4.2 barrels so in here, we're a little bit, a um, little bit disorganized at the moment, but we, um, we've been working hard on infrastructure. So all of our infrastructure in here is pretty much done. The sink is put in. We did that the other day. We kind of moved our plumbing over, so that kind of looks weird, but the glycol chiller will be up against it, so you won't see that. Uh, but we had to do that because of the glycol chiller. So we had to kind of move the plumbing over from the original plans, it was a little off. RO water system is pretty much done. Uh, what you see at the bottom here are two glycol lines. So our brew house is a low water use brew house. This is why we have this giant tank here. It's a, a thousand liter tank of glycol. And um, so when we chill our beer, it goes into the plate chiller like everybody else at home. But instead of water, glycol runs through this plate chiller and takes that down quickly. So we can run wort through here at full speed into the fermenter and have it come out cold, uh, ready for serving, uh, ready for pitching, excuse me. And that's why we have this large 100, 1,000, excuse me, 1,000 liter you know, storage tank, which is insulated too, by the way. So our glycol chiller has a closed loop on the inside here, which just keeps that tank to whatever set point we decide is efficient for us, uh, 33, 30, I don't know yet, we haven't decided. And then the output of these is, um, uh, we have an output here, which is going up over and into all the inlets of all the fermenters via the, um, the solenoid that you saw there, that brass solenoid. And uh, we're gonna tee off of this though, because our um, homebrew scale uh, which is going to be our uh, test batching. Uh, the, basically, the, the 10 gallon system I have at the house will be running some experimental beers through that. And those little fermenters will be over here the Blickman from Zilla and a couple of brew buckets. So there'll be a control panel over here, but we'll actually tee off our main glycol with some small solenoids. 
to be able to uh, keep those those fermenters at uh, at the right temperature as well. So that isn't installed yet, but uh, I do have a control panel for it here. So that's one of the new projects I'll be working on. We'll probably end up mounting that somewhere on this wall nearby, which will have uh, just STC 1000 controllers on there and some solenoids and uh, its own pumps. But I'm using FTS, FTSS pumps from, from uh, SS Brutech. Uh, what else? Uh, well, as you can see, we, um, we decided to do um, we're, we're not going to do doors and windows because um, we don't have to. Come, come to find out, we thought we were going to need to do a firewall and use a two-hour burn sheetrock, but we don't have to. We can leave this wide open because we have solid brick walls in between the two units. So we are allowed to just have this wide open, So which we are. We're just going to keep this wide open. No door here, no window, just a serving window for the kitchen. So we had these uh, appliances sitting on pallets for quite some time and I just couldn't help myself in uh, unpackaging them. So I'm only just gonna bring the, the bottom one out here. It's a double, uh, double door, individually uh, uh, thermostatted, not a word. Uh, <laughs> temperature controlled, uh, you know, two different ovens uh, in here. And they have these little uh, pizza stones in here. I'd never seen a square or a rectangle shaped one, um, but we're gonna have to get one of those little pizza shovels. Sorry, somebody walked into our, our unit. Happens all the time, but we're still not used to it. Um, so we're gonna have to get one of those pizza shovels or pizza spades to get that thing in and out of there. Um, and we'll have a little prep area for assembling uh, pizzas. And it'll be nice because uh, directly back here is our walk-in cooler and we'll have shelves uh, on the left or right. Um, cheeses. Uh, pre-made, you know, uh, dough, uh, crusts that we can uh, put toppings on, sauce, all that. Uh, then we have our, um, this one's gonna be a little harder to take off, but it's our flat top griddle. Um, that's actually bigger than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> um, so pleasantly surprised about that. And then our double basket uh, fry later, which is about the size I thought it was gonna be. So we've got it all covered in plastic right now, because as you can see, we uh, don't have drywall up in the kitchen at the moment, and when we do hang the drywall and we start doing mudding and sanding, we're gonna make a big mess. So the plastic may or may not help, but I'd like to believe that it will. Um, these desks had been taking up a good portion of Gary's garage for probably since April of last year. So about 10, 11 months, something like that. Um, those came from a job that I worked, um, and they've got stainless tops. They were cashier tables. Um, and they've got stainless steel tops and perfect for a work surface in a kitchen. Uh, and then over here we've got, um, Gary worked on this uh, hand sink and then three compartment corner sink with a fancy uh, nozzle uh, to swivel from sink to sink. Um, this would fill these two tubs I would imagine. So it would be, uh, you know, rinse, uh, soap and then uh, sanitize. Uh, and then we'll have our water heater over here. We bought our big chest freezer. It's gonna go right here. Because uh, the cooler is gonna, it's gonna refrigerate things down to 33, 34 degrees, but the things that we want frozen, um, we're gonna have a chest freezer belt right here. So, um, can't think of anything else that we're gonna have over here. We might have one other thing. Microwave, probably steam oven. Yeah, eventually, maybe we'll get another Coffee table. Maker to extend this work area because it gets filled pretty fast. These fans right here, um, where this little nipple comes down into a 90 degree elbow, that's a, a condensation line uh, that we have to run out of the cooler. And um, about right there, we're gonna use a condensate pump um, to pump it up and over the door. And then it's gonna have a natural fall all the way out because as Gary touched on in last video, can't put it down the drain. It's gotta just dump outside. And so that's what it does. Um, we've got some CPVC running along the top. Uh, and that was something that Gary and I had kind of been workshopping for a while. It is nice to have, you know, you go to those breweries that have the uh, uh, self-serve customer, you know, you go self-serve yourself with a tap. It kind of makes you feel like you're pouring your own drink, which is kind of fun. Um, except it, in our case, it's only gonna be water. So that's water coming around. Um, 
Right here is eight, eight taps, eight taps, and then on the side, this is our hallway. And so the water's gonna come here, it's gonna run through a charcoal filter, and then we're gonna put, um, it's basically an expansion tank for water heaters, three gallons. Uh, it's coming off of uh, Gary's homebrew rig because his, we're gonna get all the water for RO, for the, for the, the pilot system, from our big RO system for the brewery. So he's not gonna need that tank anymore or his RO system, but we're gonna have a three gallons worth of chilled water um, for customers to have. This is all of our kegs. <laughs> they are- It's 60 kegs, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, 40 halves and 20 slims, but it, it doesn't even take up half the cooler, which we're pleasantly surprised about. Uh, obviously we're gonna have, because um, eight taps are there and eight are here, we're gonna have more of them on either side, but right now they're all kind of clustered in the corner but it, uh, we're very happy to see it doesn't take up even half. So that allows room on these sides uh, for stainless steel racks for food storage and whatnot. And for future um, kegs. Right, sure. and more keg storage yeah, in case more demand. We, yeah. We've come to the conclusion we'll probably need at least double what we have. Yeah, so that's good, we got room for it. So one of the big projects that we knew we had to do, we had the barn board come in and I didn't even know before I did it that I was just gonna volunteer and take this on, but I did. <laughs> and I didn't know how long it was gonna take was this barn board wall. Uh, and, and Gary graciously let me just go to town on it. So uh, I'll, I'll say that it took seven days. It wasn't seven days of 10 hours each. It was, you know, bite off six hours, do two hours, help with Gary with something for three hours, come back to it for three hours. Uh, but yeah, seven days worth of coming in here, cutting all the boards up, not making sure that seams don't line up on each other. Things that I didn't even think about that Gary had had in his mind about this for a while. I'd never seen these constructed before. Um, so it, it, I took a lot of time to try to really think it through, but also to conserve, uh, uh, you know, drops, uh, you know, just not have too many little pieces or you know substantial size pieces i should say when i do my cuts so that we have spare material left over to maybe use somewhere else um ended up with a good amount of material uh and and finished the whole thing and then um finished it off with some trim here uh which looks really nice it ties in nicely with the backsplashes uh and then a trim piece here where drywall meets uh barn board wood as no um um the uh, four tap keyser is gonna actually gonna go here. Yeah. It's on wheels so we can push it away. If we have to re egress this area quickly, you can just push it, it'll be on wheels. But uh, yeah, we'll have four more taps here, so. And then uh, the wine cooler. Wine cooler will be here. Yeah, right there. Yeah. All the sinks are mounted now and they're all in place of where they're gonna be. And what Josh was talking about here, that charcoal filter you saw is approximately sitting right here. And then we'll probably have a serving, self-serving water point here. Yeah, and so in, in this space, uh, you can see up there, I'm not gonna open that one, but in, in, in this space, there's not a lot of storage. Um, and so one thing that we are going to do is, um, the cooler is maybe only about that tall. And so that, that facade goes up another foot and a half, two feet higher. Uh, than the cooler because we have the chilling unit up there. But the entire top of the chilling unit we can use for relatively lightweight stuff. Um, but how are we gonna access it? <laughs> uh, well, I built a storage door over there. And then um, uh, there's this one behind the bar. I'll show you how this one kind of swings open. Except for the handle and the two little hinges here, you wouldn't even know it's here. But uh, We'll have storage up there um, because on that wall, that's the kitchen, that's gonna be sheet rocked off. So we're really gonna only have access to it through here or if we go up to the mezzanine, we have to climb up and over the railing and climb down, which is less than ideal. And we'll have a taller <laughs> ladder than this little step stool. So it's a nice feature to have and we'll put seasonal decorations up there, uh, our jockey box for events, so, you know, little stuff like that. And Gary got to work on the pergola here. When, when I was looking at this, I had an idea that I might want to do this. When I was looking at the finished cooler and the finished work, it something it just it needed something more, and I wasn't sure what it, it just looked odd that it just came to the top and that was it. And then it was it was nice. It was wide open, but 
it just felt like something was missing. So I had had this in the back of my mind that a possibility we might do wasn't even in the drawing. We just sort of, we talked about it afterwards and, and uh, Josh was like, yeah, sure, man, go ahead and see what it looks like. So um, yeah, so we did this. Um, we're not sure exactly, I, we know we're probably gonna leave it natural uh, but we're not sure if we're going to put something over it like lattice or some sort of, I don't know, decorations or, or whatnot. So anyway, we had to get to the structural part of this. So you got a lot hanging over. So these are two by six rafters basically. And I've got three major beams that go directly under the mezzanine. And, uh, this, this one closest to us now is actually on the two by three wall and the furthest one away the third one is also on the two by three wall which those are 16 footers those go all the way out and are the main support for this hanging over the edge here uh i'm gonna climb over yeah okay this is a 16 footer that is a 16 footer that is a 16 footer so what we had to do was try to figure out how to get this part to hang over and not droop down from its own weight or be a, a, a problem. So what I ended up doing was, the, these are one length. Uh, and what I did was, is I, I mortised out this beam halfway. So the other one's halfway mortised and they lay into each other like this. So it's one continuous board, one continuous board, but half of it has been cut away. And that's, seems to provide a lot of support. Now, if structurally they have an issue with it, we may have to put some Simpson ties over the top. Um, but other than that, it's pretty solid. Um, uh, also, and uh, the additional beams beyond the three main supports are, are done with this, uh, uh, this board here and that board there. Well, that, that board here actually is one of the mortised boards that fit into each other. I can't remember the name of that joint. But anyway, somebody can correct me in the comments. <laughs> um, so these, these vertical boards, uh, horizontal boards rather, that aren't main supports tie into this one as well. And uh, it's been up for, what, a week and a half now? Yeah. Yeah. So there hasn't been any sagging. And when you get up on the bar and pull on it, it's, it's got some spring to it, but it pops right back. It, Feels pretty solid. We're not gonna have any go-go dancers on. Yeah, swings nobody's gonna from swing it. from it or anything <laughs> like that. But uh, my, my only concern would be uh, if uh, the uh, the inspector had a problem with it. Uh, so hopefully not. Uh, we're gonna be inspected on that soon. And uh, so yeah, that's uh, what we want to do up here. Like Josh was saying, with storage, but our cooling unit here, uh, we it's. The way this, this wall has been built, it's, it's actually higher than the cooling unit. So we're probably gonna lay some lattice down up here to cover this so people from the mezzanine aren't seeing directly into like all of our storage and... and um, just kinda, it's like a visual diffusion. Yeah, just to, you know, they look up here and go, oh wow, look how dusty that is or how dirty that is. Anyway, it'll be covered up somewhat with lattice work. So just to sort of diffuse that view. Well, we're going to play with that because we may shove a sheet over the top and see what that looks like over there on that area. So that's something we're still playing around with. Decorations too were an idea not to clutter it up, just keep it wide open and just put some decorations over it. I, I think my daughter mentioned something about seaweed, sea fake, grass fake sea grass, seaweed or whatever. Glass blown, icicle looking things. Yeah. At the end of the day, I think money really matters. <laughs> that, uh, that may be a down the road thing. <laughs> so Josh and I also replaced all those bright white lights uh, with these hanging lights here. Uh, we we uh, used, utilized the uh, scissor lift uh, after hours and we just went up there and rewired, uh, replaced the wire, the, those bright fluorescent lights that were up in here before. Uh, the lighting is much better now for for the brewery. It's uh, not as good to work in, but um, we're we're near the end of the most of that work now. So uh, yeah, we have the surface of the bar to finish, and uh, 
few more things on our list, but uh, that's the wood that's going up on top of the bar. I can pull one out. Yeah, was, yeah. that's probably even, that's a more pristine piece there, but mm. you can see some of that. The well, way that's that the looks. underside. I know, but oh, it yeah. goes all the way through. So this, of course, will all get cut up for the right, right size, but that'll, that'll be the front of the bar, basically, you know, and uh, it'll be up higher because you're not going to see end, so the end grain is going to come out this way, but this will actually cover the end grain this way, I think. I'm not sure. We haven't decided yet. Still game planning it. Yeah. We'll play around with it. Uh, we'll end up doing the pony bar first and see. Uh, work out all our kinks in the uh, construction part of it. <laughs> uh, you know, we have trimming and finish work to do. There's, there's a bunch of that stuff left to do, but well, that can all be done once we start brewing beer. So the, um, back to this, I, I'm, I know I bounced around a little bit, but uh, what we had decided to do was the output of the, the RO water I ended up running CPVC along the wall all the way across to here with a spigot because it's going to dump into um, directly into the HLT from here. We'll end up putting a 90 on there, but that's uh, that's where our RO, RO water discharges, so we don't have to lay hoses on the ground. But I already talked about our chiller being totally not water, but all glycol chilling. These are the two pipes, the supply and return. And then the one other thing, we have a steam stack. Uh, so um, when we brew in here, we won't be, uh, you know, we'll get the aromas, but it won't be uh, overly steamy in here. And most of that discharge will come out of the bottom here as water. And we'll probably just put a triclo clamp on there and just point it towards the drain. But I also had to bring a water supply in for this. Uh, the kettle isn't where it belongs right now. So, but uh, when it is where it belongs, these two line up fairly close. So that'll just be a small uh, hose, flexible hose. We're doing flexible hose on all on our final connections, just because of you know slight movements, vibrations, whatever the case may be. We didn't want things cracking, leaking. So every final termination you see in our brewery will end up being with a flex hose. Uh, also, if we have to move anything, it's a lot easier to just take a, a clamp off and, you know, pop a hose off and then move the equipment than to have to cut CPVC or whatever. Uh, the brew panel, uh, we, we ended up just having to cut a bunch of holes in it uh, to mount all of the infrastructure hardware uh, that goes back and forth. So none of this came with this. It, this is all stuff I, I did. Um, these are all the... Um, control wires for the um, temp sensors to all the kettles and um, well not to these yet I have to do these two yet but all of the fermenters go to through here uh, the control wires for um, well this here is power to the auger one is to the auger and one is to the brew, brew house pump uh, they, they split off here and go their separate ways and then now these are the element wires. Uh, there's a lot of elements in that kettle, and they're big, big three-phase elements. So these are these will be cut to size, but I ended up putting these in as well. Uh, there's two of them, uh, two three-phase outputs. So all those holes uh, we'll put it in as well, and then the additional um, uh, wires for I believe this is power. For, it is power for both the chiller and no I'm sorry not the chiller chillers going over there this one is for the glycol pump and then these this one here is all the control wires for uh, the solenoid valves for the uh, fermenters so still a lot of like final tie-ins and connections like that but Majority of the work is done. I only have to put one more PID in there for the additional kettle we bought. So I'll just have to figure out where I want to put that. And then the internal wiring of that, relays, solid state relays, wires, yada, yada. So that, that's 
not a big deal. We probably won't be using the seven barrel right away anyway. So, um, but I'll, I'll hopefully have that done before they actually connect power to it. Main power will come into the right top corner, uh, you know, way in the back. So you'll just, you'll see a giant gray PVC, electrical PVC come down through the top in that panel. And that's where the um, 100 amp source comes from. So it has to come from there. So my guess is they're gonna be popping out of the side of that panel, passing that the feed, the main feed coming through, going up, nuttying over, hit that corner on 90, just above the exit sign and down through the panel. Uh, that panel does supply a lot of the stuff back here, but not the RO water, which is 220 single phase or two phase or whatever part of the world you're from. Um, that gets connected and then uh, that's it. The, all the controls for this is from the main panel and also the, the glycol pump that pumps glycol to those tanks also from the main panel, the supply. So we just need to bring in our CIP, our CIP plug over here for our CIP cart. We'll have a, a plug probably here and you saw the CIP cart, which we've done videos on before for cleaning kegs. So that, that, that will get a plug here and then probably somewhere near it, it will be another plug for the pump cart or I think no we're going to use the same plug mm. it's going to be one or the other um, uh, the pilot system uh, plugs are going to be over here as well so we'll be able to plug the pilot system in over here also the mill uh, so that uh, we can actually put the mill outside when we're milling to keep the dust down in here to a minimum so we'll probably be milling early in the morning or the night before one or the other um, after we've closed or before we open and um, so we'll mill outside and just sweep out sweep the dust away or whatever is whatever mess we've created it's covered a lot but we've done a lot we have been super busy Josh started putting our tables together up there uh, they still got the cardboard over the top to protect them but we still got to put all those chairs together again those are things we can do while beer is fermenting no. absolutely so uh bit more of a depth, uh, more in-depth uh, overview this time around. I um, was just talking to Gary off camera that it's, you know, with, with videos and with the, the newsletter that we put out monthly, it's hard to tell you, you know, uh, leave you with a little teaser of what's up next. But uh, if, if, I, if we had to guess, based on a conversation we had today with the contractors, if we're not running uh, conduit for all that electrical that uh, Gary was talking about, uh, we'll be starting the tiger wood on that bar so either way we're gonna be working on stuff uh, and, and then hopefully hopefully um, we'll see what happens in a month's time uh, the plumbers are supposed to come in within a week and maybe they'll get our sinks hooked up uh, maybe a toilet well uh, we'll uh, see no the, the plumbing being stubbed out and the ring uh, being put in the floor and all that will be done uh, but um, they won't be putting anything in because we still have to That's finish true. out the kitchen. That's true. Uh, we're not going to tile the floor in there. We're probably going to epoxy it, uh, but uh, we are going to tile the walls about five feet up. In the, yeah, in the bathrooms. Yeah. In the bathrooms. So that way it'll be very easy to clean there, you know, spray, spray it down with bleach basically, hose it down into the center drain on the floor. Uh, and then do a nice little mop up afterwards. Because things happen in bar bathrooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so just despite all that, yeah, I mean, we, we, we've got some things that we could have coming up in the next four to six weeks, and um, hopefully we start closing some things in a bit more. Yeah, so the, the plan for the brewery is as soon as we can get power connected to it, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll, uh, we'll set the brew house in, in its place with the stairs and have it all leveled, plumbed, <clears throat> And then it's leak checking, ton of leak checking. Mm -hmm. We're gonna fill the glycol tank, uh, storage tank with water. We're gonna run water through all each of the tanks, the, each of the glycol lines and make sure there's nothing's leaking. I would be shocked if there was not leaks, uh, which then would require repairs. Um, and uh, that's okay, We're, uh, we anticipate, as, as much as I try to be very, very, diligent in all of the fittings uh, 
you know as well as anyone in the homebrew industry and in the professional brewing industry, if those of you may be watching. Uh, best laid plans, man, but shit leaks, it just does, and then you gotta go back and fix it. So we anticipate that. Um, yeah, and not to mention that once we do get electrical, we got 60 kegs to CIP. Uh, yeah. A lot of lot of parts, a lot of like tri-clamp fittings and rubber gaskets, and so there's gonna be a lot of CIP. You're, we're not gonna probably show any of that because that's boring. Um, but there will be a lot of that. Uh, yeah, I think do, once we get well. once we get um, our legs under us uh, as far as the brewing process is concerned and how things are done behind the scenes, we could probably do some really in-depth videos on you know how to how to run a you know a, a larger scale brewery. A, a giant homebrew system what it is uh you know 4.4.2 4 barrel home brewing system uh it, would you agree yeah no absolutely i mean, I mean, it's, I mean the way us home brewers have we, evolved we, over the years uh, this is all miniature stuff at home is all this just giant more I, I think the threshold might be at seven barrel when we can actually say it's not large home brew yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, then and then you're either boil or direct fired at that point. Uh, we're still using electric. I think we're at the limit, maybe. I think you could still do seven barrel with electric, but it's not recommended. So we're kind of at the high end of the size limit for you know using electric elements um, in a brewery. Yeah. So which is fine. This uh, I honestly thought we were going to start out with a 3.5 barrel system. So this is actually more capacity and with that additional seven barrel fermenter that gives us what did I cal we calculate 27 barrel brew house oh, oh total yeah, total like fermentation total capacity. fermentation Something capacity like that, at, yeah. yeah 27 barrels yeah yeah, yeah. That's change for a brew pub that's decent I think yeah. that gives us uh, uh, when we were looking at our budget numbers uh, we're only operating in the 11 percent of the brewery capacity in the first six months yeah. Uh, so there is a lot of room for expansion. Uh, well, not to mention the, the barrel capacity and all the kegs well, if simultaneous to the fermenters. Sure, know. yeah. So we, we're going to definitely have a bottleneck probably, uh, you know, by month four where we're going to just be running out of kegs. Um, so we'll end up having to cross that bridge when we get there. But at least by then we'll, we'll have some income and an idea of uh, what our demand is. Right. And they, you know, hey, if we, great problem to have if we need to buy more kegs. You know, that's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm not worried about that. We have uh, quite a few to get started with. So. Yep. yep. Um, yeah. Anything you want to add, Josh? No, I think that's uh, that's pretty good. Like I said, a pretty in-depth overview, and uh, we got a lot of work ahead of us still. But like you said, luckily, 90% of the heavy, heavy lifting is behind us. And by the way, we're talking to you inside of an air-conditioned. Uh, building right yeah now. we have the AC on right now because it's uh, probably about 88 degrees outside right now with not a ton of humidity but enough to make it sticky yeah so finally we're, we're, we're about to start approaching the off season here in southwest Florida and so we couldn't have come at a better time <laughs> yeah uh, don't want to be using up electricity when we're not making money but hey, it's fine yeah it'll be all right we'll be fine <laughs> yeah it'll be all right just, uh, just another, yeah, just another shot in the arm. <laughs> so, you know, for a future uh, video, we may show some some small clips of, uh, you know, finishing up the bathrooms and uh, uh, maybe some of uh, finished work in the kitchen. But I think the majority of the video that you're going to see moving forward is testing, uh, testing the brew house, looking for leaks, uh, how we're going to test the brew house, uh, how we're going to measure all the kettles and um, you know, for uh, loss, yeah, uh, line loss, uh, transfer loss, all of the loss that we have to calculate in advance for uh, beer smith, and um, yeah, I think that's. Yeah, hopefully, we can get a little bit more granular and education centric yeah. stuff. Yeah. So yeah, and then uh, that we'll have uh, time to refine our SOPs as we move forward too, and. Uh, yeah, it's all. There's always something, man. Yeah, always <laughs> something. Always something. But I mean, we've uh, we've done a really good job at planning and foreseeing pitfalls. There's a few that we missed, but uh, most of them we've caught early, and uh, we've been able to adjust fire without a lot of uh, ass pain. 
So, um, yeah, with that, I think we'll sign out. We'll sign out. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning Cheers. in. Cheers. Cheers.